Hey everyone, this is Shannon with Smoke in the Wild and on today's episode, I'm gonna take this Oklahoma cock crappie. We're gonna smoke it, we're gonna make all the fixes. Stay tuned because we're fixing to get wild. Ah, there he is right there. All right, before I get started, I'm gonna address a couple of man rules. Number one, you don't mess with a man's woman. No problem, I have a phenomenal one of my own, check. The second one is, you don't mess with a man's hat. No problem, check, I got tons of my own. The third rule is, you're not technically supposed to mess with a man's crappie recipe. However, I am gonna violate that rule. Now don't get me wrong, I am an absolute sucker for fresh fried crappie. And we've got a future fried crappie episode coming up, maybe not how you would expect, but nonetheless, we've got one coming up. But today, I'm actually gonna smoke this crappie, and I'm gonna prepare some other things to go with it that are gonna blow your mind, so let's get started. So, you guys should know by now, I'm a big fan of duck fat, so what I'm gonna do, and I, this is simply to act as a binder for the rubs that I'm about to use, and there's, it adds some flavor. So I've got these crappie fillets right here, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the duck fat and I'm just going to lightly coat both sides. All right, we're going to flip these over. All right, these are beautiful, beautiful Oklahoma caught crappie fillets. And what we're going to do to them is just going to like take them to a whole new level. So let's just hit these real quick. All right, I'm gonna add a couple of different rubs to these crappie fillets, but before I go any further, I wanna address something that's come up before. Just because you don't have the rubs that we use here on Smoke in the Wild, I encourage you to check them out, but if you can't get your hands on them, I want you to just use whatever rub you feel comfortable with, whatever you know tastes good. Don't be afraid to try different rubs. Today, I'm actually gonna be using a Plowboy Fin and Feather, okay? now. I, it is calling for to use on fish or poultry, but I encourage you, I like it, it's got a citrus taste to it, but I've also used this on other things. I've actually used this on pork butt. I've used this on steaks before. Don't be afraid, don't get limited by what the name says. Now, there are. it is true that the, the people that put these rubs together work hard to try to come up with different flavor profiles for certain proteins but never ever cook afraid, don't ever smoke afraid, and don't ever be afraid to use the kind of rub that you like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit one side of each of these fillets. It's got some herbs in here as well, but I'm gonna lightly coat on one side with the Plowboy Fin and Feather. And I want you to take a look at this, how beautiful this, this looks with just a little bit of rub on it. I also want to point out that I'm using my handy dandy uh, ceramic uh, pan that goes in the smoker, uh, the grill, also oven. It actually, you can flip it over and it has a, 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 a stovetop function. It's phenomenal. So that's what I'm using. Now, that being said, if you want to do like you do with salmon or supposed to do with salmon, which I hardly if ever do, which means you take cedar planks, you soak them in water for 30 minutes so they don't catch on fire in your grill. If you want to do all that, that's fine. But I've got hungry kids waiting on us. They're waiting on this meal. I don't have time to soak cedar planks. So this roasting pan works phenomenal. It, can, it conducts heat very, very well. So that's what I roll with. Now, the Bearded Butcher recently came out with, it's called the Butter Blend. I've ordered it, tried it. It is absolutely phenomenal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip these fillets over to coat the other side. I'm gonna take this and on the other side of these crappie fillets, we're just gonna lightly hit with the butter blend. So we've got the Plowboy Fin and Feather on one side, and we've got the new Bearded Butcher's Butter Blend, okay? Now, we're gonna cook these on the Hasty Bake. We're gonna smoke them, which I've got real hardwood charcoal. We've got a log of real Oklahoma pecan on there, all right? We're gonna, and I've got the Hasty Bake up to about 325 degrees. The internal temperature that I'm aiming for on these crappie fillets is 140 degrees. And the reason why I'm gonna know that is I use a meat thermometer, which we'll get to in just a little bit. 
It isn't gonna take long to get it to that temperature, especially on this pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside because I have already prepared ahead of time in this vintage cast iron skillet that my good friend Dan Drake over at uh, Odor Crusher and Scent Crusher sent this to me. I'm very grateful. This, I think this was, uh, it was originally made like in the 30s, early 40s. Really, really cool. He knows how much I love him. He, he gifted me this. But I've got on the bottom, I have some hickory smoked bacon. I've got some fresh garden green beans and I've got some Vidalia onions that I've already pre put in here. Because it's not gonna take long for these crappie fillets, it's gonna take about 12 to 13, 14 minutes for this to cook, especially the bacon the way we like it. I'm gonna go ahead right now and put it on the hasty bake and then we'll be right back. I'm gonna prepare now the next part of the meal. Now my wife and I are doing the no carb, low carb deal, okay? And we love it, it's making a difference, we feel better. Our kids aren't so much doing that. So for them, I'm going to make the red potato, mashed potatoes that they love with some basil and some other things. And I'm gonna take all of but the potato ingredients that I'm gonna use in the mashed potatoes and I'm gonna make my wife and I mashed rice cauliflower. Now before you throw your nose up and say that sounds gross, have you ever tried it? Because I promise you, if I put a plate of this mashed potatoes in this rice cauliflower side by side, you're not gonna notice much of a difference. So stick with this, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do both. You can buy rice cauliflower or you can make it yourself. Again, I'm on a time budget. I know how to do that, but I don't have time to do it tonight. So I buy one pound packages from Costco, but you can get it at Walmart, Pretty much every grocery store in America has this now, okay? It's a pre-packaged one pound deal. I'm actually gonna take it over here to the microwave and I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna put it on for five minutes. We'll be back and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with it after that. All right, so this isn't completely cooked through, okay? But it's still pretty hot, ow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually got my food processor blender here, my Ninja, all right? And I'm gonna cut this package open I've tried doing it when it was straight frozen and it just doesn't mush up uh, as well when it, unless it's a little bit cooked. So we're just gonna dump that in there. All right, not a big deal. I'm gonna put the lid on and we're gonna let the machine do the work. It's a little bit loud, I know. And then you gotta kinda just shake it up a little bit so it comes off the side. That's about as much as we're gonna get out of it. All right, we'll set this lid aside. We're gonna pull our blade out. Okay, set that aside. Then you're gonna take it and you are going to dump it into any kind of skillet you want. Again, I'm a huge cast iron skillet guy, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm gonna put it in this cast iron skillet, get it out of here. It's pretty well mashed up. Okay, not perfectly like the potatoes are gonna be, okay, but good enough. All right, we'll get that out of there. All right, now we've got it in our skillet. I want you to take a look at this before we go on to the next phase. Then what we're gonna do, now did you honestly think that on Smoke in the Wild, I was gonna get out of here without adding some bacon? Because if you thought that, Sorry, but you're wrong. So what I've already done before, I snuck it by you. I sauteed just a little bit of the same thick cut hickory smoked bacon that I added to the green beans. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add this drippings at all to this cauliflower. It's actually a good kind of fat. It's not very much. It's probably about, honestly, about, about two tablespoons worth of bacon. It's not much. Put this back over on the stove. We're just gonna kind of mix that in there. I know. Would you ever think about putting bacon in rice cauliflower? Well, I certainly didn't before. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some pure Irish butter, okay? Gonna open this up and we're gonna put probably about, oh, roughly two, two and a half, maybe three tablespoons. Just take a guess, take your trusty knife. That's about two tablespoons. Uh, let's go ahead and add another tablespoon. Not a whole lot of butter, all right? Then what we're gonna do is we are going to take some basil, that's right, some freeze-dried basil. We're actually gonna do that to this, the uh, mashed potatoes here in just a minute, and we're just gonna kinda douse this in here. 
All right, probably about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. We're gonna take some fresh cracked pepper. Gonna add that to the mix. The other thing we're gonna add, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of sea salt. Uh, not quite a tablespoon, okay? Same thing I would do on the mashed potatoes. We're gonna take a tablespoon of minced garlic. Add that to the mix. All right, get that in there. We're gonna be adding some Parmesan cheese in a little while, and also some chives, but right now I'm gonna kinda of get this mixed up. I'm not gonna put it on the stove, I'm gonna put it on the stove, but I'm not gonna fire the heat up yet. We're just letting this set aside for just a minute, because now what we're gonna do, put this on the stove, we're gonna dress the potatoes. All right, so I've already, I've already chopped up some red potatoes. There's about, it's about four medium-sized potatoes for the kids. We're gonna slip it into this water, all right? We're gonna go put it on the stove so we can get these soften up and then I'm gonna show you how I do the mashed potatoes. I've already drained the potatoes, they're done. They've been boiling about 11 minutes, 12 minutes. I'm gonna dump them into my stainless steel bowl, mixing bowl that I use every night. And I failed to mention that I prefer red potatoes when it comes to mashed potatoes. So I've got those in there. I put my lid on there. I'm gonna let them steam a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take some of that real Irish butter. I'm gonna take about Oh, probably two tablespoons. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in there. I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna add just a little bit more. It's probably two and a half, maybe three tablespoons. All right, I got the lid on there. It's about time to go put the crappie fillets on as well as check on the green beans. But before I do that, I'm gonna make a really quick butter sauce for these crappie fillets. So, and I'm gonna go take my little miniature vintage cast iron skillet. I'm gonna put a little bit more butter in here, all right? Then what I'm going to do is take, I've got a one good sized lemon, all right? And I'm going to get the juice out of that lemon, put it in the cast iron pot skillet here. Get that going, all right? Get that going there. Then I'm going to take some dill weed, all right? And I am going to add that to the mix. All right, we're gonna let the Hasty Bake melt this. I just put about, mm, tablespoon less than, no, not even, about a half a tablespoon in there, okay? Last little ingredient, we're gonna take just probably about a teaspoon of garlic, mix that around there, we're gonna let the hasty bake melt the butter, then we're gonna take our silicone brush, and when these crappie fillets are about done, we're gonna dredge it with this sauce. So let's get started, let's go get the crappie fillets on now. Got out some cattle call, because we're gonna check these green beans. Woo-wee, they're almost done, look at that. We're gonna go with those crappie fillets on there, all right? Boy, look at that, that is, oh, these green beans are almost done. We may pull them off and put them in the warmer. Not too much cattle call, just enough. Get that good and flavored in there. Ooh, that bacon infused green beans. In fact, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull those off in just a minute. And now I'm gonna put the butter sauce on. And we're gonna let it do a thing. We're gonna come back and get the green beans. And by about that time, it'll be very close for these crappie fillets to be done. Go ahead and pull the green beans. They're the warmer right now and we've got the butter sauce melting as we speak. It's not gonna take long for those crappie fillets. Again, we're cooking to 140 degrees, and the only way we're gonna to have to do that is with our trusty meat thermometer. So while that's doing its thing, this butter is now melted in my mixing uh, bowl there. So I am gonna take about a quarter cup of milk. Again, this is for the kids. I don't tell our health coach, but my wife and I might sample this a little bit. I don't know, but don't tell them. We're gonna take about, oh, two tablespoons of heavy whippy cream, all right? Then we're gonna take about a tablespoon of garlic. Yeah, around there, all right? We're gonna take about a tablespoon or so of sea salt. Get that in there, all right? Then we're gonna take about, oh, roughly a tablespoon of freeze-dried basil. Get that in there. These, our kids absolutely love these mashed potatoes. We're also gonna take some shredded Parmesan, probably about, oh, not quite a quarter cup, all right? Now, you can use a blender if you want, but I'm just gonna be old-fashioned, and I'm gonna take my old-fashioned mater masher here, and I'm just gonna mash, mash and mash and mash and get all the lumps out, mix it together, All right, might want to add just a little bit more Parmesan. All right, it's always easier to add it than it is to take it out. 
kind of thickens that up a little bit. All right. Get that, get, get all the lumps out, mix it around, and boom, we are done. I want you to take a look at that right there. In fact, you know what? Don't tell our health coach. I'm gonna go ahead and taste it right now. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. All right, those taters are done. Let's put the lid on it. We're gonna put it, go put it in the, uh, the warmer. All right, let's tempt these crappie fillets right quick. Uh, I can tell already, I didn't just look at them, they're done. Yep, we're, that's, we're a little bit overdone there, but that's okay, they're gonna be phenomenal. We're gonna take this butter sauce straight over here. We're just gonna sop it, brush it on. We'll do some more in the house. Remember, we've got the lemon, we've got the garlic, and we've got the butter. Let me tell you something, we've got these smoky crappie fillets from right here in Oklahoma. The kids are gonna love it. Cannot wait for you to try this recipe. All right, let's get them in the house. All right, all right, all right, all right. Don't that hurty. Oh my goodness. We're gonna show you a close up of these crappie fillets, but keep in mind, we made a, we made a butter sauce out of dill, garlic, um, and lemon, and that was it. And I'm telling you what, it just adds, I cannot wait for you to try this recipe. It just adds a whole new dimension to these crappie. Oklahoma caught crappie. Who would have thought of smoking it on a hasty bake? So we're gonna plate this in just a minute, but we still have one final step, and that is the mashed rice cauliflower. It won't take long to reheat this and melt that butter. We're gonna add just a little bit of garlic, all right? We're gonna take some basil leaves, all right? We're just gonna sprinkle a teaspoon, all right? We're gonna take some shredded Parmesan, probably about a quarter cup, maybe just a little bit more. Then we are gonna be ready to plate everything together and give it a try. All right, that was fast and furious, but we got it done. I want you to take a look at this plate of food. We have the mashed potatoes that we made for the kids. I'm still gonna try it. We've got the mashed cauliflower and rice. We've got the bacon infused smoked green beans and we've got the smoked Oklahoma caught crappie. So there's only one last thing to do, and that is I am gonna go ahead and take some freeze-dried chives, and I'm gonna put them on top of the cauliflower rice. Now let's taste. Let's taste this crappie. Woo! Man, I hope it doesn't make my hair grow back. You can absolutely taste the smokiness in those in, the, in that crappie. It is absolutely unbelievable. The green beans, the cauliflower rice, I'm telling you, don't tell our health coach. I'm gonna go ahead and taste the, these mashed taters again. Mm. To be honest with you, to me it's an even tie between the mashed potatoes and the mashed cauliflower rice. They're both phenomenal. The rice mashed cauliflower, if you've never tried smoking crappie, you have to try it. It's absolutely phenomenal. This meal was quick, it's easy, anybody can do it. In fact, at Smoke in the Wild, we are literally all about taking people from saying they can't do it to wow, I just did that. If you haven't had a chance yet, smash that subscribe button, get that bell notification for future episodes, and as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.